You got lay around myself. I'm going to modify it just a little bit, though, Lisa. <laughs> Two part question. Yeah. Who inspired you? Past tense. Who inspired you? And who inspires you now? Start with Steve, Alan, Josh, and Fred. Who inspired you? Maybe to get going in all of this? Who inspires you right now? Could I just have a little put input on that last question about the mileage? Yes, Steve. See, I was a miler, and I would run pretty much 90 miles a week to run a one-mile race. So that means that these guys should have been running like 2,500 miles <laughs> to equal to what I, for one mile, 90 miles. So you're at 26. You should you've got to up your mileage, there, you guys. So, but it is. It's true. The the mileage is the key. You know, you got to get the mileage in, no matter what your distance. 800, 400. You still have to get in a, a aerobic base. Oh, to answer the question, uh, back then when I first started running, there were two people that inspired me. In high school, it was Dave Waddle. Uh, he won the 800 meters in uh, the Olympics. When I was in high school, he wore a hat, so I started wearing a hat. Uh, so that must have made an impression with me because I was an 800 meter runner. So was he. Uh, funny, I was when I was in high school. It was the the pre Fontaine era, but he was not a hero of mine because. He was a long distance guy. So I liked the, the shorter distance. And then when I got to college, uh, John Walker came around. He was the 76 Olympic gold medalist. That was my sophomore year of college. And all of a sudden I was a big John Walker fan because here's this big, good looking, barrel chested uh, runner. And back then, distance runners were geeks. You know, they're not geeks anymore, but back then they were. And sorry, Frank, but uh, <laughs> but uh, you know John Walker, this long hair, just a very very good looking guy who, who changed the impression of a runner. So uh, John Walker was my my hero at that point. And uh, today, boy, well, that's a hard one. Yeah, that's tough. That is a tough one. <laughs> Your wife. Yeah, yeah, my wife. There you go. Hey! <laughs> all my answers. Hey! Hey! I, you know, really, the, the people that inspire me these today are all the people that, that make running a priority in their life. I mean, really, there's so many people. You, you step to the line of the marathon and half marathon, you see these 25,000 people who all now make running a priority in life and, and health and fitness and they do it naturally and they fit it in. I mean, you guys are the heroes because you work full-time jobs, you have families and you put in the time to train to, to complete a marathon. I mean, that's that's really astonishing and my hat is off to you. Alan? Um, gosh, I feel like a job interview. This is a tough question. <laughs> um, that inspired him when I was younger. It, it was probably Sebastian Coe um, and Pat Porter. I don't know if you guys remember Pat Porter, but he won like a whole bunch of U.S. cross country titles. Um, and then actually, by the time I graduated college, I raised Pat Porter, which was kind of fun. I took him down. Um, um, and who inspired, inspires me now? Honestly, I um, Steve doesn't want to believe that I do have a job now, but I actually work for a competitor group. I'm the operations director for this event along with seven other rock and roll events. So I've, I've made the transition from athlete to now working athlete. So I get to work on events, which is really great. But um, for me, what inspires me is, is people that do one of these for the first time. Um, and you can see it. I, I heard a woman speak last week, believe it or not, and she talked about coming through cancer and turning 60 years old and finding out she had cancer and at the same time her husband had cancer and just all these crazy life things and for her she made it five years cancer free and she signed up for a half marathon at age 65 and the process of training for that and this was a woman who had never run in her whole life to train for that to then accomplish it and to to make it such a so much more than just running 13 miles that's what inspires me now seeing people out there and there's gonna be a massive amount of them on Sunday doing that for great causes, for personal reasons, for huge uh, personal benefit, for losing weight, for whatever it is. Um, that's what inspires me now, to see that happen. See, growing up, uh, I was a soccer player, and uh, I didn't really know a whole lot about running. My, I, I read an article on Abibi Bikila. He, he won the gold medal barefoot. I think it was in Rome, and uh, I, I had that article up on my wall, and uh, 
other than that, running wise, uh, Steve Scott down here at the end, I, I kind of had a, a man crush on because, yeah, he's a sexy guy. He, yeah. <laughs> Later, Steve, please. This is taking a decidedly yes. dark turn. <laughs> Steve, Steve has run the most uh, sub four minute miles in history. Uh, he was the American record holder in the mile for a long time. I grew up in Southern California, so I knew all about Mr. Scott and Mr. Shorter here. My dad was uh, always lauding his uh, great, great performances, and uh, it's an honor to sit up here. And Alan, Alan, you've always been an inspiration too. I don't want to leave anyone out on the No, no, that was default. Okay, I'm just kidding. Alan, it's not an inspiration. <laughs> Now, uh, growing up, uh, you know, it's it's good to have it's good to have icons that, that you look up to. I had I had Bo Jackson posters all over my wall. The former Auburn running back and baseball player, and the guy was all pro in both sports. I I've always admired athletes who compete at the highest level, uh, whatever whatever sport it may be. Nowadays, uh, to echo what what both Alan and Steve said, uh, I have I have a large social media following and I get to hear a lot of stories uh, like like the one that Alan just shared and a lot of I, I heard one earlier tonight um, a young kid who's, who's running the mile at the at the Kids Rock event where's he at he's over there right, right there there he is he's my buddy. and uh, he loves to run and it's it's great to be able to cultivate uh, a love for running in the youth because I think Nowadays, too often, running is used as a form of punishment. You know, you're you're bad. You're late. You're late for practice. Run a lap. You know, you're bad in PE. Run two laps. You know, and that's kids get develop this sense of, oh well, running is is punishment. It's it's what we have to do when we're bad. And running doesn't have to be a punishment. It, it's fun. It's really a great thing that you get at. You can go out the door. You don't need a team. You can go out there and just do it by yourself, and it's a gift you're giving yourself every day, a gift of fitness. And with the Kids Rock program, it's really a special thing that these kids get to come out. They run they run the event, they run a mile, and they get a medal put around their neck. And for a lot of these kids, this is the first time that they've ever won anything. And I love going out there to those events. I'm not going to be able to do it this weekend, but the weekend of the rock and rolls i applaud the competitor group for investing so much into the youth and into, into fitness and just getting those kids out the door so really just uh being able to hear the stories i think for me nowadays has, has really inspired me i had a little bit different uh, way of uh, choosing role models and people to inspire me and I think it ties in with what Josh was saying about young runners, and I, I didn't get to talk about that before, about parents and, and your children. You know, the self-selection process is so important in sports, uh, not only in the team sports, but in the individual sports. And I always, I always counsel people to, you know, let your children try every sport they possibly can and want to, because I believe there, there's a biomechanical muscle memory, neural pattern, however you want to put it, there's a connection in all of us. Each one of us likes to move in a certain way. It, it gives us enjoyment, whether it's swimming or it's riding a bicycle or it's running. So with, with your children, you, you, you let them select that movement that most pleases them, that gives them the most joy just in the doing. And as I was discovering that as a child, when I would look for people to inspire me, I think I instinctively, and this is something you can think about with your own children, I tied it in with my incremental goal setting. I kind of took inspiration from people in my peer group uh, at a level that wasn't that much above me and very often would be where I am. In high school, I had my hero role model and the cross-country team captain. When I got to college, it became the same thing. When, when I graduated, it, it became people like Steve Prefontaine and, and Kenny Moore as, as I was trying to improve myself. But at each level, I would choose, in a sense, someone else to 
inspire me. But the other thing I think I was able to do there, if you think about it, I personalized it so that I could also take advantage of the mentoring aspect of that. So when you're choosing people to inspire you, perhaps think about not doing it in a, in a fashion where these people are totally inaccessible and far removed. Let people close to you in that group inspire you. Now, the, the people who inspire me now, uh, it, it goes along the same lines uh, that, that everyone's been talking about here, but it, it, my perspective is a little different in that it's been alluded to. I've been around longer than anyone else up here. And so I, I've seen the sport evolve. And I, I've seen the activity of running evolve to the point where it's not really a sport anymore. It's a social phenomenon, much more than it is a sport. And when I started out, it was a very exclusive group. And one of the reasons I got involved in the marathon, I thought these people were a bit too exclusive. And what inspires me now is the inclusive aspect of running, which I think we, we've, we've talked about up here. But what I'm also going to be inspired about in the future is the fact that this, this group of, of, of runners, people who truly discover you know, these people that run for what I call other people and other reasons, for charity, many of them discover they really like doing this. You know, and they come from areas of society, not only American society, but worldwide, and it's, it, you're inspired by people who discover that they never in their wildest dreams thought that they would enjoy doing this. And Allie is, is a great example. Sure, she, she came to this race from a, from a much different place, but you actually discovered you loved the process, you know? And, and so that's what continues to inspire me, it, it, is that I wasn't that wrong. It was okay to be a geek. Laboring in obscurity when I was growing up was okay, because now I have all these other people who really understand why I was doing this. So exactly. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, guys. That was really